Now, Brad, we've spoken in the past about uh, space junk and now an Australian company is part of an international effort to recycle space junk. Yeah, look, yeah, we, we've talked about how much there is. I mean, there's millions of small pieces. Uh, there's more created all the time. And so how do we get rid of that and how we clean it up? And then at the same time, there's a second problem, and that is we have all of these satellites, and quite often they just run out of fuel. Uh, once they run out of fuel, they cannot keep their orbits in you know in same orbit because they slowly drift over time due to a little bit of atmosphere. So they can't really stay up in orbit, so they need their fuel to stay in it. So once they lose it, that's that. So this this essentially supply chain has been thought of if if we can take and grab all this space junk and through a few different steps eventually turn it into fuel to power satellites that solves the space junk problem and then prevents satellites from becoming space junk. And extending their lifetimes means that the satellite lifetime is longer. So it's actually cheaper to run. You know, you're not replacing it every few years. Uh, and it makes it more sustainable. So a really ingenious idea that hopefully in the next few years can be pulled off. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely a fantastic idea. Obviously, it's been uh, such a big issue. I even note that mm. the US has said that debris now threatens the interest of all nations. Just how problematic is it? It is. You know, Space Junk, it doesn't care what satellite or whose satellite you own. And that's the interesting thing, because it's always floating around. And most of it is in that low Earth orbit. So between a few hundred kilometers and about a thousand kilometers above the ground. Uh, and that's where most people's satellites are. And, you know, not quite a hundred, but close to different countries have satellites in orbit. And anyone can be affected by it. You know, right now there's nations of four different people in space, so four different countries have humans in space. They are all at risk as well with Space Chunk. Um, the estimates put that Pieces bigger than 15 centimeters are numbered in the tens of thousands, closer to the hundreds of thousands. Pieces smaller than that, down to a centimeter, could be upwards of the millions. And you only need to be a centimeter wide, even if that, to create a lot of damage. You're traveling 20, 30, 40,000 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if you got hit by something at 40,000 kilometers an hour, it doesn't matter really how big you are, you're gonna do a lot of damage and this is the big risk. So if you can deal with helping to clean this junk up and then in turn create something that we desperately need and that is essentially a petrol station in space, you're really solving two big problems. So it's a really cool thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, nice to see another Australian company as part of another big initiative. Absolutely, and uh, you know it's obviously so important in tackling this issue. So good to see. Now, Brad, uh, moving on. On Wednesday evening, NASA launched a DART mission. Now, this will test the ability to deflect an asteroid. Take us through it. Yeah, it's been one of the missions I've been waiting for since <laughs> it was announced because it's so exciting. It's the idea of can we defend Earth if we find a hazardous asteroid? Now. We don't know of one. The asteroid being tested is not a danger to the Earth. This is purely a test, much like we do fire drills and emergency drills, so we know what to do and what works. This is what's happening. So uh, it will start, or it started now, a, just under a 10-month journey to reach this asteroid. And when it gets there, it's going to collide at over 27,000 kilometers an hour um, with 500 kilograms in the front to try and essentially create a crater and give this little asteroid a nudge. Now, it's not going to be a huge nudge. We're not talking about sending this asteroid flying. You're really just trying to get a, can we shift it? If you can shift it even a little bit, um, you know, even tens of centimeters or a couple of meters, well, that will push it enough if you do it early enough to sail safely past the Earth. You only need to nudge it a little bit, millions of kilometers away, so that a hazardous asteroid turns into one that sails safely past.